What a day, diary. What a day. <sighs> How shall we say? My uncle said that I, I needed to get up early when the dawn rose. And there was the nice priest he, we had he'd seen the day before. And he had various things with him. Crosses, I think, and, and paraphernalia. And with him, one or two men from the monastery. And he led us into the hills. Down along a steep valley, where there was a mark he had put in the night before, he said. And we went down. And down at the bottom, there was an old building. And we went inside. And my uncle had lanterns lit. But if truth be said, the sun was coming arcing in. And we followed its rays. Right to the very back of the building, past those tombs that were open. Right to the very back, where there were two. One great tomb. And we opened it and it was empty, just bones. And it was written, the mother, on it. And then we turned, and it was a little tomb. It had a, a lock still on it, a dark lock. But as I watched, the priest reached out, and he said something in Latin. And the lock opened. And he raised it up. And as I looked down, there she was, as pale as moonlight, with hair darker than the night sky, and her eyes seemed to be struggling to open, to open, to... But the priest had laid upon her a cross, and as he laid upon her chest the cross, it seemed to sink into her, and there was a sound like a sigh or a wrench, as he threw upon her Holy lent or holy oil, which he lit, and with a whoosh, and a voice like freedom, she was gone. Then he turned to me and said, That Carmilla has hidden in this tomb for long years, since the days of Philip the Fourth. She has taken girls like you as the centuries have gone, but now we are all free.